Hey guys, what's up? Aru. I wanna talk about dragons. Specifically, pyro dragons. Pyro twin dragons at that. You see, we've been getting twin archons since patch 2.0, but because of the recent emergence of the hydro dragon nouvellet, plus the coexistence of dragons in Natlan, I think the chances of having a twin dragon dynamic will be the next archon story twist. Not only that, I think we'll be getting dragon-like characters as well as dragon pets, or maybe even mounts in the future because of Natlan's lore. So welcome to another video of whether or not the MC is a actually the Dragonborn. Today's video will be a theory on the twin pyro dragons in Natlan through the Mayan hero twins Shbalanka and Hunapu, Natlan's possible Aztec inspirations with their feathered dragon Quetzalcoatl, and the African twin gods Lisa and Mawu, and their Yoruba origins through the Natlan character Jansen. Lastly, a take on Natlan's dragon slash human civilization and what we can expect from Natlan's dragon and war region. Let's start off with a character that almost none of you guys have ever heard of in the entirety of Genshin Impact. This character's name is Shbalanka, and you can find him in Nouvellet's introduction tweet. One entombed with the primal fire who mentions a true ordeal when they return. Whether or not this is about Nouvellet and the dragons, or Celestia, or something else completely is still up to speculation. But I think this quote highlights the return of the dragon lords and what sort of conflict would happen between the old and the current world of Tavat. Another thing within Genshin's lore is the primal fire that he mentions. Honestly, I think this is similar to the primordial sea that almost sunk Fontaine way back in 4.2. Primordial means to exist at the beginning of time, and primal means the early stages of evolution. And both of these words are used as first iterations of someone or something. But instead of underwater, this first flame would be found within the volcanoes of Natlan. Maybe in one of the oldest volcanoes of Natlan. And it wouldn't be outlandish to think that an old dragon would also live in an old volcano. Add to that, Shbalanka was entombed with the first flame. So we can sort of assume that he was sealed within wherever this first flame was located. Be it a volcano, a ring of fire, or even an undying flame somewhere in Natlan. Moving on to story, an Archon quest similar to the Mayan hero twins is one way of showing Natlan's narrative. Shbalanka in Mayan mythology actually has a twin named Hunapu. These two twins were born from their executed father named Juan Hunapu and Shuawika who was the daughter of the lords of the underworld. It's worth noting that their father was executed because of losing in a Mesoamerican ball game called Poktapok, using a 7 pound ball where players compete with their lives and whoever lost would become slaves or would be sacrificed. And the loser of this first game was Juan Hunapu. Now the underworld in Mayan mythology is called Shibalba and was a place of offerings and greatness. Quite weird for the underworld to be a place of greatness. The rulers of this underworld range from the various gods of diseases called Kish, a skeleton god of creation named Kisin, and the four gods that were present in the creation of the world called Bakabs, or Bakabs, which could have been the four shades when they were first created. The story goes that Suwika had to run away from the underworld because she had to be executed for being pregnant with the twins. She then escapes to the surface of the world. In Genshin, this could be the Abyss and Tevat. Now the twins spend their time growing up in the surface world and would someday avenge their father by going back to the underworld and defeating the underworld gods with the same ball game. Even though they won the ball game, they were still killed by the Shibalba lords in a way that might be similar to Genshin's story in Natlan. The Shibalbans had a huge oven intended to burn and incinerate the twins. But this strategy of the Shibalba lords were already known to the twins. So they voluntarily went into the oven to be burned and turned into dust. This story is similar to the Mari Jivari of Natlan as well as the story of the Lava Walker, a place where journeys would seemingly end and where you could find a sea of flames assumed to be a sacred volcano. If we go back to Shbalanka from Genshin, then that might be where Shbalanka could have been sealed with the primal fire. But in the story, after the Shibalbans thought they won, they threw the ashes into the river where the twins would regenerate as part of their plan. From there, they basically played a trick on the Shibalba lords as a performance by burning all the underworld's lords in the quote-unquote oven or volcano, but instead of coming back to life, they simply died and were burned to ashes. 
this was a point where they won against the Shibalbans, and the land of Shibalba would no longer be a place of greatness and offerings. Now as for the twins, they went back to the overworld and then later became the sun and moon. The similarities between locations of Natlan, the themes of resurrection, as well as the possible relations to the old world would be how Natlan's Archon quest unfolds if Hoyo followed the Mayan hero twins' story. We could also have relations to the Abyss, as well as the history of Tavad that we still don't know about. Honestly, it would be a pretty banger story since we haven't had Archons or Dragons resurrecting just yet, only previously dead or about to die Archons. In Aztec mythology, we have the feathered dragon Quetzalcoatl, named the Precious Twin, and the dog-headed humanoid named Solotl, the Evil Twin. Oftentimes, Quetzalcoatl and Solotl are synonymous with the planet Venus, which is known as both the Morning Star and the Evening Star. As Quetzalcoatl is the personification of light, Solotl is the personification of the dark. And what do you know, we have two light and dark elements that aren't related to the seven elements of Tevat. But instead of dark, fluid, and light Icker from Fontaine, in Natlan there could be two types of flames, one light and one dark. The darker fire can be similar to the flames that the abyss wielders could use, while the flame of light could be a more pure flame that doesn't hurt but actually heals and maybe purifies the abyss, similar to the waters of Amrita and how we purify the abyss in the chasm. Quetzalcoatl himself is also a patron god or guardian of a place or person. And Quetzalcoatl is also a dragon, a feathered dragon at that, while also being a creator deity and being one of the main four gods, and the god of wind in Aztec mythology. His twin Salatl was a god of fire and lightning, and is associated with the heavenly fire, a relation between wind and fire that we've seen since before the game even released. So maybe Vanessa meeting Venti wasn't just a lucky meeting between a Muratan and the god of freedom, but a destiny that the god of winds would meet with the children of fire, maybe preordained by the goddess of fire. Add to that the possible inspiration of Murata, Himiko, also being fond of drinking the pains away. Now if in Genshin we get a Mayan hero twin named Shbalanka, which is very likely, then we may or may not get Hunapu as a character within the game as well. Maybe as the current Archon, or as the actual Archon twin that works as half of a full Archon. Maybe they could each take half of the power of a full Archon. Without having to pull for two characters, maybe they're twins that come in one character pull, and share a single kit as twins. With regards to lore, maybe it would be similar to the creation of Egeria, and that they were created by the Shade of Life to replace Natlan's primal fire. That would mean that Natlan's pyro dragons would also be twins. Hence Quetzalcoatl and Salatl being replaced by Shbalanka and Hunapu. And instead of completely removing the dragon twins and replacing them with Archon twins, only one of the dragons fell. And maybe only one of the twins was placed alongside the remaining Pyro Dragon or Pyro Archon. This could explain why dragons coexisted with humanity for so long. Now whether or not one or the other of the two twins are dragons or archons will be up to Hoyo. Because looking at it right now, it seems like the Mayan hero twins were actually the dragons and possibly Quetzalcoatl and Salatl could be Murata and a possible twin. Now, that's not all, because African mythology also mentions twin creator goddesses named Mawu, who was male, and Lisa, who was female. And in Yoruba mythology, which is where Yansen was inspired from, Mawu and Lisa was originally named Yemowo and Orisa, which from my understanding is where they originally historically originated from. Both were twins in Yoruba and African mythology and both were represented with the sun and moon. But instead of fire and war or a dynamic with wind, Yamawo and Orisa were responsible for creating human life from clay and teaching humans to build civilizations respectively. Although the history of Natlan itself may not be inspired from this mythology, we could have lore for the creation of humanity after the heavenly war that goes along the lines of the shade of life and the creation of humanity. This would be more interesting since the vet's entire history isn't exactly accurate and has pretty much gone into tales and legends. And it could also be said for Natlan's history, since Vanessa and her Muratan tribes 
have long since lost the knowledge of their people apart from the arts of combat, let alone their god Murata and their region long ago. So the mythology of Yemowo and Orisa, stemming from Yoruba mythology, slowly becoming Mawu and Lisa into African mythology, could be how Natland's history ended up as, as well as how Tavat's history could be passed down. For example, Four Shades into Three Moon Sisters and Asili, and from the history of dragons to the history of archons. This leads us to a pretty interesting quote from a pep that may or may not have something to do with Natlan and possibly Tavat's past. In war, the victor would inherit the right to shape the world, while the losers must turn into ash. Now this quote is sort of similar to the quote by Winston Churchill and that history is written by the victors. Which I think isn't what it is today in real life since history is written by historians who are quite passionate about keeping accurate records of history. But this quote may apply to the world of Tavat since that world is more or less run by a tree that rewrites history or memories of history. A pretty interesting set of events that changed as history goes by. Now let's talk about dragons in Natlan and the coexistence between dragons and humans. Based on everything that I've said, there's a possibility of one twin from both dragons and archons falling. So it's possible that the other living archon and dragon twin might have decided to rule the region together. Shbalanka, who was in Nouvellet's Twitter post, which we for now will assume is the dragon of Pyro, so now we have a region of dragons and war. A combination of dragons that have evolved since the defeat of the dragon lords and the humans of Natlan that live for the concept of war ruled by Murata and whatever it may mean to them. This may be the reason that Vishaps or let's say dragons have coexisted with humans for a very long time even though dragon lords have lost against the heavenly principles. But it would be confusing whether or not the goal of the heavenly principles was to wipe out the dragons rule or to just establish a new one where it's okay to have dragons with them. We already know that they didn't exactly wipe out all the dragons and they even let some of the gods live with the dragons alongside them. But then again, the heavenly principles might not be keeping dragons and humans at bay from becoming gods, but maybe they're keeping humanity and everything else from what they may find and not be able to fathom what comes with becoming gods. After all, what lies outside of Tavat may or may not be invading Tavat and wanting it to be destroyed. Again, we're still theorizing about a region that won't be out until 4 or 5 patches later. But that would explain why dragons were able to coexist with humans and how Natlan became a region of dragons and war. And there we go, a little theory on Shbalanka and the Mayan hero twins of Natlan, as well as a possibility of the twin dragons from Aztec mythology being replaced by twin archons, a take on the African and Yoruba mythology, as well as a little theory on the dragon slash human coexistence. Comment below, are we getting twin pyro dragon lords or am I asking too much for assuming that we're going to get dragon mounts and pets? As always, leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you want to see more of my content. Now then, we're done with as much of Natlan as I can make, so we're moving on to the new Chenyu Veil patch. I'm excited to know about Chenyu Veil's huge jade ornament and story behind it too. I haven't played it yet as of recording this video because midterm exams were crazy and I wasn't able to upload last week. No excuses, I was just busy with exams. So that's all from me, I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like, comment, if you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the bell for more of my ramblings and stay mad theorists. Bye!